Hey, this is Sean with Troxel Services. It's been about five months since our Cedar Pavilion. We're gonna tell you a few things we did right and a few things we did wrong. But first, I'm not running for nothing. I'm out of breath. Please subscribe and reward me for running like that and like the video as well. But again, we built this five months ago. What are the things we did right and what are some things we would change? Let's go check it out and we'll talk about it. Let's go over and actually turn on the lights because we never did that last time. So as we walk over here, basically we have three shop lights in here. You can kind of span up and see them, but three shop lights, 5,000 lumens each, one, two, and then there's a third one over there. And again, that's powered by a solar panel. You can get off of Amazon for about $150, connected up to a marine Duralast battery. And then you need a converter to convert it from 12 volt to 120 volt. And then we ran, we ran extension cords to go down here and put an external switch that's rated for weatherproof right here. So I'm gonna go and turn this switch on right here and all three lights are gonna come up. All right, so you can see that that really makes a difference. No electricity needed from the house, all solar panel driven. So that's a great feature. Let's walk over here a little bit. Okay, so if you look up here, you can see the solar panel we mounted that particular direction. I don't know that we ever had close-ups of these purlins. So the purlins that sit on top of the rafters that the metal roof screws into, a lot of times people will use two by fours, but we ended up using two by six cedar, uh, cedar lumber for that. It looks great. The color just really matches everything else because it's the same type of lumber. And look at the decorative kind of notches we created at the end. Again, this is a custom cedar pavilion. This wasn't a kit. We looked at pictures and we said, hey, what do we want it to look like? And we created our own plan almost as we, we were going. So if we look at the type of ground that we created here, this parking pad, uh, we dug down about five to six inches, kind of leveled it out the best we could. And then we put crushed limestone down, CR 610, I believe. But look at what's down here. We're gonna get a close up on this. Come down. This gets really hard. It's not cement, it's, it's really fine limestone. It's called number 10 limestone. So it's, it's small particles and it really packs down really well. You look at these tires that are sitting on it. And this has been about five months and it just turns into a really great pad without having to pour concrete. And you can of course put it down when it's 30 degrees or 25 degrees. So I'm really happy with that. Let's talk about some things that we're gonna have to fix. I don't know that we actually did them wrong, but we're gonna have to fix. So we're gonna come over here now you can take a look at this. You can take a look at this right here. There's a lot of water that rushes off of that driveway. That's why we created this. Uh, this is washed gravel. It's not a crushed gravel, it's washed so that water can travel through here. Well, it looks like the water really wanted to also take this path right here. So very easy fix. It didn't it changed the integrity of the structure. The posts are still just as strong. We're just gonna put a little more washed gravel in the mix here. So let's also talk about the height. Uh, I've had some comments about how high this is. Now, if we go back and kind of look, you can see that there's a wakeboard tower right here. Now the back is higher than the front. The front is about 10 and a half inches or 10 and a half feet clearance and the back is uh, over 11. Well, that's because the ground slopes, right? So we want it to be level at the uh, the side beams and the, the roof line, the drip line, we want it to be nice and level. But you see how that wakeboard has to clear the first header beam. And so because of that, we, de we didn't wanna just have it clear it by three inches. We wanted to clear it by at least a foot. But you also think about this, what if there's an RV that the homeowner wants to purchase? Uh, a travel trailer, this could park right underneath there and if we made it too low, sure, it'd look a little more quaint, if you will, but you wouldn't be able to fit every boat underneath there that you wanted to, or a travel trailer, or a pull-behind trailer. 
So those are a couple reasons why we put the height at what we put it at. I don't know that we would change it. I think it's the right thing to do, but it's really a preference. Certainly costs a little more to, to build it higher. So we're gonna take a look at the rest of the solar lights and the necessary equipment for that. If you look up there, there's the marine battery we talked about and the converter. So those two components are needed to go to that light switch. You can just see it at a bit better angle here. It'll tell you if the battery is full. So here's one item that we did miss a little bit that we did a bit wrong that I want you to know about before you do this. The solar panel that's up there right there and the marine battery, during the winter, it does not get enough sun to maintain. And the reason why is because that converter, when it's turned on, it, it takes a little trickle of battery out of the marine battery, or I should say storage. And if you have a several cloudy days and the sun doesn't come out, it'll end up draining it completely. So really for about three months out of the year, this is not a good setup. Now for nine months out of the year, it's perfect. So here we are in April and it's gonna run just fine. You can run these lights for a couple hours each night, turn it off and let the sun take care of it the next day because the days are longer. But again, I think we should have thought through that a bit more to cover the winter time in terms of light. All right, let's take a look at a few other things here. Okay, so here's a small decision we had. You'll notice these braces. These are four by six braces, very beefy braces. Now notice that the, cent the center posts, the braces are a little shorter than the ends. So again, this is part of a custom kit. We decided that it didn't have to be the exact same on each one. We wanted, to, wanted it to feel a little more open in the middle. So I do think aesthetically, this works really well. It's a bit more of a design feature, but it looks great. Okay, let's also look at, you can see the strength of these sistered two by 12 side beams. And you see, they, they have many points where they are, I, I call it sandwiching them together, but it's, it's really just creating uh, more strength and tension by having a couple blocks in between. Some of those are naturally the four by six braces, but then look, we also put a couple four by fours right up there. And so we put those in place just for additional strength. Then we had to screw that small little brace in as well. <clears throat> Okay, so here's a debatable one. I don't know if we did this one wrong, but it is something to consider. Look at this drip line here. So if you come out and you see the last purlin at the very end, and then you see the rafters that have just a little, a little extension on, and then the, the drip line extends about an inch out. Now you could very easily extend the roof out another two feet. And that would keep more rain from coming in the sides. And so there's definitely some wisdom in that. You want to be careful not to extend your metal roof too far past where it screws into the purlins because wind can end up kicking it up and bending it. These, this was perfect in that regard. But some of you or some people that are building a pavilion, they might, they might want to have the roof line come out a little further. Here's why we didn't do that. If we take a, take a step back here, you see so much of the beauty of this structure is the wood itself. If we were to extend that roof line out too far, and when you're driving from different angles or you're walking up to it, you wouldn't see kind of the exposed side beams and a lot of the, the, the decorative wood connected to the other pieces of wood. And so we really wanted to keep that feature. That's why we did not extend the roof line out as much as some might. However, there is wisdom in both. So that is something to consider. Okay, let's take a look at a few other things. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the roof and the material we're using up here and just how it looks. So if we just kind of look around, you can kind of see the braces, how thick they are, the number of truss we have. Remember, we have five truss. It's a 28 foot deep structure from roof line to roof line. It's 30 feet, has a foot overhang on each side. 
So for 28 feet of distance, we have five truss and they have braces four by four in between. Now remember with rough cut cedar, it's a true two by eight or two by 10 or two by 12. You know, if you're using regular pine or something like that, it's uh, just a little over an inch and a half or something like that. So this is thick wood. Now just a couple things to notice. So first of all, you can see how well the lights light everything up in here. So very happy with that. Uh, the number of rafters we have in here, these are two by eight rafters. It's not just for strength, it's for aesthetics. One thing that we didn't show on the original uh, build video, which you can go back and look at uh, where we built this five months ago, is these joist hangers. So this is not one continuous ridge beam because we have so many truss and we have these very strong lateral support with the roof purlins and or the lathing or the roof purlins. So because you have all that lateral support, you don't have to have one ridge beam going all the way through like you do with, with a, an attic or a structure you're building where you're not trying to use as much lumber. Even up there to the left, you can kind of see right above you a kind of close up of a black decorative joist hanger that connects right up to that side of the truss. And so again, we're just putting strength everywhere we can. Uh, these are two by 10 uh, ridge boards, if you will that the rafters connect up to. So very happy with that. Now one thing we did with the purlins is we, I believe we bought 16 foot length purlins, but we staggered the seams. So everything's screwed in with, with either lag screws or regular exterior screws. Uh, no nails on this at all, um, except for the hurricane ties. We put some nails in that. But everything is, is connected with lag screws, very strong lag screws, and regular screws. So, but even with the purlins, we decided to stagger them. And it's hard to explain. Ask me in the comments if you're not sure what I'm talking about. But we basically staggered the seams. Right, so so yeah. we, we really thought about how to make sure that this whole thing stayed strong. You just feel the strength in this cedar pavilion that we built. You can also look at a few just very uh, inexpensive decorative features right there. We just spray painted uh, that uh, little washer right there just to give it almost a decorative look. So that's like a 40 cent thing that we did there. We put some Rust-Oleum black uh, spray paint on it, metallic type of uh, uh, texture. Those are all lag screws that are, that are black, and so they just look really good when they get in there. If you look right down to the left, you'll see an actual decorative kind of connector brace right there, and those are kind of nice to add. We didn't add too many of those, uh, but we added enough to where it just adds a lot of, um, it adds a lot of character to the structure. So we have gone through pretty heavy wind storms the last five months, 40 mile an hour winds, 45 mile an hour winds. I see no defects at all to this metal roof. And it partly is because we didn't have it overhang too far. It connected to the purlins on the end really well. And it didn't just, you know, have a lot of wiggle room. It was, it was really tied down to the, the purlins very well. And we put just the amount of screws that you need in the roof. The ridge cap is all perfectly intact. So this structure really is holding up well. And one other thing, and we'll get back down on the ground. You can kind of see over here how this is an interesting connection. So oftentimes you'll have your, the bottom of the trusses sit on top of your side header beams right here. And so what we did is we had to notch it a certain way for aesthetics. So you can see it only lips over there to a certain extent. However, we have a lot of bracing in there. There's bracing even in between on the other side that you can't see sandwiched, sandwiched between each two by, uh, two by 10 and two by eight. But then you have a brace down there as well. So we did that on the bottom of the trusses. And again, it looks good. It allows for the uh, rafter tails or dovetails at the end to look really good on the outside of the structure. 
Well, thank you so much for watching. This concludes our five month review of this awesome Cedar Pavilion. If you have any questions, I want to give you my email address. It's go at troxelservices.com. Send me an email and I'll do my best to answer your questions. We can even potentially set up a call and talk about your project. Stay tuned, more content to come. Please subscribe.